Uh, Nigerians are battling tough times as the high cost of fuel, gas, uh, foodstuff and rising cost of services are putting pressure on their daily survival. Those at the helms uh, say the hardship did not begin today. They say it is a reflection of the bad policies and leadership of previous administrations. The National Security, uh, Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu recently lamented that the current administration inherited a bankrupt country from the previous administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari. According to him, the revenue generated by the Bola Tinubu led administration is being used to repay what was taken from the country. He assured Nigerians that the federal government will strive to ensure a robust and viable defense management and apparatus in the country. Joining us in the studio is a policy analyst, Shijibumi Adebi Bennett. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And also joining us uh, is a public affairs analyst, Chuks Ngoko. Chuks, it's good to see you again. Thank good you morning. for having me. Morning. Right. Recall sometime last year, the minister, former minister of labor, uh, Chris Ngigi, had said that Nigeria was broke. And uh, that, that was when Asu went on strike and there was a back and forth and he was talking about the country not being able to pay some of the demands they, are, they were requiring or asking for. And then, uh, you know, reactions came with regards to that statement he made, uh, counter, countering the states, some of the statements he made and all of that. And then early this year, we also saw Nigeria's Minister of Budget and the National Planning saying that, um, openly acknowledging that Nigeria did not have money, so to speak. But um, when you look at the statements coming out uh, from government, persons in authority, I wonder what comes to mind, how you react to this statement. Does it lend credence to what uh, the former Minister uh, of Labour said? Let me begin with you. Yes, um, and it wasn't just the former minister that started the conversation. Yeah. If you can remember at the time, um, the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, right. um, accused the government at that time of just printing the money. Mm. That there was, the country was in a very dire situation and the CBN governor was just printing money. And before that time, even before the Buhari administration took over, we were warned about the situation of the country. Um, I think um, former Minister for the Economy, uh, Okonjo Iweala, yeah. said something about that because that was the time they were already borrowing to pay salaries. And um, um, the former CBN governor also said those things in several uh, fora. So, and the only thing is, I, I, believe that the Buhari administration was not diligent enough in taking some very stringent and vital decisions in terms mm. of resetting the economy. Right. And um, I think the, the, the government was aloof in terms of like, everything that was being done. I, I, I think it was unfortunate that we lost um, Kemi Adiosho because of the stuff that happened around his NYC uh, and uh, NYC certificate and all that. Because after that, it's, it just became like a downward trend mm. in terms of the economy because she was picking almost every week. She was coming up with um, so many policies. We had whistleblower, we had s something. Mm. Somebody was making us to be um, observant and um, to put us on put our, on tools. On our tools, yes, yes. Something was really, really wrong. Right. But after she left, we didn't have all those information again, and we thought we were... All was good. All was good. So, and when Obaseki mentioned that uh, it, it, it um, was politicized mm. and it was shut down. But this present government, we, they have said we shouldn't pity them. And um, I like the fact that on, on a TV station, I'm not sure if it was channels, um, sh uh, the former presidential advisor to, or uh, presidential candidate advisor, Mr. Showumi, mm. said um, they cannot come out to say 
what really transpired in the last administration because it is also the same party. Mm. So it, I, I'm even surprised that Ribadu can come out to say the really? beat is set. Right. Because the president has always said that he inherited both liabilities and the assets. Mm. But I think the liabilities are way huge more than the assets. Mm. So it, it's a huge one, like you said. So um, we are not, the first, um, I think, advantage the government had was to take the decisions they, they took at that time because if they had um, maybe waited on it. The removal of your subsidy and, and the harmonization of of the dollar because right. that gave them well you know that that has also come under huge criticism yes because it is us that are paying those things it right. is the citizens but in every country as well it is the citizens that drive okay we'll, we'll come back to some of the decisions taken by the government let's hear uh Chuk's perspective to this the fact that um the government is coming out clean to say that see this is what we inherited from the previous government. And like he mentioned, even though being in the same party, he is surprised that um, the NSA can even come out to say these things. Yeah, but one, 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 my, my first reaction is, why is he Rubado that is making this statement? Who should make the statement? I thought maybe um, someone who has to do, uh, who has to, uh, someone who has something to do with the Ministry of Finance, Maybe the spokesperson of the president, his um, press person, and all that. He, he I'm, I'm does that would that first, change anything? Well, well, for me, it, it, it makes a lot of difference. Mm. The context within which he said what he said, I do not understand. So, if he had come from someone who is connected directly with the economy, I can understand. But that, that's by the way. Now, I you can remember, but I have sat in this studio to draw attention. I am not surprised at what they are saying. Okay. Because way back in 2008, when the Lehman Brothers collapsed in America, it took several years before the EFES got to Africa, got to Nigeria. And I remember he mentioned Dr. Ngozi okonjo mm. She insisted that Nigeria must begin to save money. And I remember that she made the attempt under Jonathan and they were governors who took that government to court over that decision. Because it, first, according to them, it was unconstitutional to begin to save that money. So we have always had issues with not having en enough money. You, you, don't all, you, as an individual, you don't always have enough money. Absolutely. There are companies that, I don't know any institution on earth that, is, that always has money. It has to do with leadership. That's why I quarrel with the source of this information. Mm. You are not an economist, and I believe you are not an accountant. Do you need a professor to come and teach you how to manage your funds in your house? Because you have a micro, a micro system in your house. Mm. This organization will not always have money. There will be times that you will not have money. And it's the leadership of the, that institution or that family that will organize the finances of that car. I am talking to you. I don't always have money. But I organize my family in such a way that I don't go to the streets and start shouting that I need money, I don't have money, I'm broke. So it's an act of irresponsibility. And I remember, I can't remember who mentioned Which that. Which exactly is an act of irresponsibility? Coming to tell us that we don't have money. How so? Nigeria is... Are you saying Nigerians do not deserve to know? We deserve to know. Right. But, but don't tell us that we don't have money. Didn't we sell oil? Didn't we produce oil yesterday? Didn't we sell on Monday? Didn't we sell last week? How about the profit that we're making or the money we're making from the removal of the subsidy? Mm -hmm. And by the way, do you, can you remember the number of times I've sat on this very chair and asked that we do away with the National Assembly? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times I've sat here on this chair and said that, look, that you need to cut your cloth according to your size? Do you know how many times I have said here that why is it that there are politicians don't lack the courage to make an amendment and to be creative with the leadership of our country. What is it a science subject to be a leader? And by the way, why do you want to apply the office of the president when you, go, you need to come back to us and tell us we don't have money? What happened to Nigeria's money? What happened to management? Let me, let me say this in addition to what I've already said. You know that on this earth, 
in the time, very long time past, mm. if you wanted to occupy an office like the office of the president, or you want to be a king in, his, in a village or in a big town, those days, they looked for a man who is very wealthy, who is very successful in his business. And the simple reason they did it at that time is because they wanted you to bring your acumen. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Your acumen, your ability to manage, your management ability to come and superintend the lives of your people. And I think that that's the point where we're at. That we are tired of having people come and cry on TV that I must be president, I want to be president. Without having the ability to manage our economy, then you come and be telling us we don't have money. What happened to our money? No, they haven't said that they don't have the ability to manage. They said they will put everything in place, every measure in place to addressing the issues as much as possible. What, what, but they just needed perhaps Nigerians to understand. No, they don't the have. They don't. They don't have because if you have, you won't have the current over bloated cabinet, federal cabinet. You won't be spending that kind of money buying buying those number of cars, SUVs, for National Assembly members. No, they don't. You won't have a, a serpentine National Assembly where we don't know how much they are earning and all the other secret uh, emoluments that they are getting. There will be enough transparency. They don't. Now, when you tell people the truth, you know, pride, when you tell somebody the truth, they get offended. But there's nothing wrong with having some level of pride. But the dangerous pride is the one where if I tell you you are doing something wrong, you get offended. Mm. You, you begin to antagonize me instead of praising me for having the courage to tell you the truth about yourself. You're approach supposed to look at yourself. You. Sorry? Approach. Yeah. Yeah, approach. You call, I mean, I'm invited here, so I'm speaking to whoever is listening that, look, you need some managerial acumen. If you came to us to tell us to vote for you, you are telling us that you have the managerial ability to manage our economy. Mm. So, when you get into that place and there's no money, you will cut down on expenses. That was why the, the you will the cut down on expenses. Once I had to remove the roads are bad. Subsidy. Recall the roads are bad. The president had taken certain steps. Okay. Removal of few subsidies. Uh huh. And then he, the unification of the naira also. This, uh, these were some of the steps I, taken by the government. So let's discuss it. Right. Let's discuss that. I, I you can trust me that. I will join you in discussing it, you know, um, comprehensively. But this man coming to tell us that he inherited whatever. It's not today that Nigeria got bankrupt. The way we have been going, that's why I went back to 2008. Mm. Look, let me tell you what happened to Nkozo Konje Uwala. The former vice president, uh, architect Sambo, he's still alive. Former president Jonathan, he's still, he's still alive. alive. Nkozo Konje Uwala is still alive. The newspapers reported what happened the day they met in Aso Rock in the Federal Executive uh, Council meeting when Ngozi Okonje Iwala was molested and harassed by governors. Hmm. The governors that were around that time, they include Governor Amechi, uh, Shomole, Arigbe Sola, um, and so many of, many of them. They were in that meeting. What happened to Ngozi Okonje Iwala? Was she bullied and harassed because she suggested that this money should be saved? Hmm. We don't have a saving culture, even by those who should know better. What did the Sambo do on that day? What, how did she intervene to save that woman in that meeting? Right. So we must put these things in perspective. We must learn how to be creative in the things that we do, learn how to cut down on expenses. Hmm. The money they are spending there, how much do they pay those guys in the National Assembly? Why are you buying a CV, SUV at that cost at this time for a people? Now, Road safety is on the road harassing people, and when you ask them what have I done, they will tell you they are trying to raise revenue. Mm. Customs is there. Money is coming into the, the, into the coffers of the federal government. And tell us you inherited. Tell us what you're doing with this money as you're complaining. Also, share your expenditure sh um, spreadsheet for us to see. Interesting. We need to quickly go on a break. When we return, we'll continue this conversation. Do stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us. Uh, before we went on the break, we were looking at uh, the matter raised by the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Ribadu, who recently lamented that the current administration inherited a bankrupt country from the previous administration of former President Muhammadu uh, Buhari. And according to him, the revenue generated by the Bola Tinubu-led administration is being used to repay what was taken from the country. I will still have our guests with us. 
policy analyst Shijibumi Bumi Adibi Bennett, as well as uh, public affairs analyst uh, Chuks Ngoko. Now, gentlemen, let me quickly come to you now, Shijibumi. There were issues raised by uh, Chooks here before we went on the break, talking about the harassment faced uh, by Ngozi okonjo when she raised the fact that there is the need for the country to begin to look in the direction of saving monies because of uh, she could read the, the signs that um, if nothing was done at the time, uh, where we are right now was going to here. happen. We wouldn't be here. So, so to speak, he, he raised the matter of politics coming to play, where she was shot down, harassed, and all of that. H how do you interpret that, talking about policy, politics coming to play in decisions as critical as this for a nation like ours? I will start by saying, <clears throat> for uh, he mentioned something which I agree with. Everything rises and falls on leadership. leadership. Right. What happened to Kunjo Iwala was not, for, <clears throat> to me, should be blamed on the leadership of the government at that time. Mm. The saving culture we didn't have that time is the same saving culture we're having now. It's not every money being generated that has been spent now. Mm. So how has this president been able to convey it to both um, APC and PDP governor? We even have LP governor uh, and ABGA. So all the parties, how have they been able they to... They have now? their representation yes. in government. Yes, how have they been able to agree going forward that we can spend everything? And why I would say I blame it on the leadership is because... What, what um, ground did Amichi, as the chairman of the Governor's Forum, have at the time? He alleged that the money in the excess crude account mm. had already depreciated because the federal government has spent part of that money, a good chunk of that money, without informing the states. So as a then, everybody should just share the money, and move forward. Instead of all of them saving in that money, and the federal government only spending out of it. It happened under um, Mamadou Bari's administration. The only difference was, it was communicated what the money was used for. The money was used for the purchase of aircraft mm. that was paid to the US government, because Donald Trump was um, receptive to us, to help us, and um, undermine or overlook the Lee law just to help us get the aircraft we needed. For, for since um, I think with due respect to, to, to the leadership of our country at that time, since 1999, I believe it, it is the, that government was the least potent I, I, to me because Obasanjo was very, very fair. Mm. in terms of leadership. And we can blame the Muhammad Ubaris administration for so many things. But when some decisions are what are decisions that are very germane to him, very important to him, he doesn't... He puts his feet down. Yes, down. down. Mm. The only thing in, that I see that he has... The, the only times I feel, I feel that he failed in terms of the leadership question is when he allowed the governors to bully him as well to jettison local government autonomy and autonomy of the legislature at the state level. Mm -hmm. Because what we are enjoying at the National Assembly, because he mentioned the issue of um, SUVs. Yes. There's nothing the executive can do about the legislature. It's first term um, deduction. As the money is going to the federal government, to the executive, it's going to the legislature. And once it's in the budget, they have the right to spend their money any how they want to. The only thing is Nigerians and civil society organizations should be the ones to take them to question and make sure that they don't spend money on frivolities. For the executive, they wanted to buy a yacht, mm. which has been a recurring stuff in, the, in, 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 our, in our budget. And the people said, are you guys serious? And they moved the money immediately to, um, uh, what's it called? The money for student loan. Mm. So we have had that even 
the purchase had already almost been made. Yes. But there would be a way. The, we, the only thing we don't want to see is that yacht, hmm. which they have assured us we won't see. But for the, for the, the, the legislature has to get more serious because they, they, they formulate the laws for the nation. And we have to see them as serious people. Now we're saving the money. And now we have paid off all the debts. Have we? Yeah, all the debts for JP, almost all the debts, I mean, for the JP Morgan, because that was what the report said last week. Right. And the banks, have, because I received that um, newsletter from two of my banks, yeah. that if you have Forex, outstanding Forex um, requirements, you can now get to the banks. And I think the Minister for Economy, uh, uh, Wali Edu, also mentioned something like that, that they have almost the cleared... Of the or the backlog because it's in uh, is in it's you know no common sense seeker for us to be owing JP Morgan and we don't know we didn't know about it and we it's thought possible. we had 30 something billion dollars in our forex mm. foreign reserve and somebody now comes in to let us know that no you have just three point something because almost 30 something billion dollars was like a security to J.P. Morgan and uh, Goldman Sachs. And that person is still, uh, uh, is still going around uh, asking for bail. And this is, this is the, um, I think, the life of 200 million people. I was with somebody yesterday telling me how he lost, uh, how his friend lost his wife because they couldn't get cash during the cash crunch. Mm. And the hospitals insisted that it must be cash before they, they could treat the woman. And the woman was pregnant. And he lost the woman with the baby. The guy went back to the hospital, almost raced it down, destroyed everything, but did they bring back the woman? No. So, and we have, you know, sometimes I think about all these things. I, I, you could have bars for leadership at any point in time, but the issues should be objective. Right. So even if you support the government, you come and you hold the government by the jugular. Because your support even gives you the entitlement to tell them when they are not towing the right, right path. Mm -hmm. So all these things, we should look at it holistically, objectively. Is this government, have they started a bit well? Have to it. me, I would say policies, they've done it. I've, I've, the last time you saw me, was I as slim as this? <laughs> so it's affecting all of us. Right. Right. That's the truth. Right. But we know that some pains have to be made to get the gains. But we need timelines. That's time what the same, the, the same thing the president We need timelines. Right. For me, in the next one year, if we don't see concrete change, if we don't see that the policies are working, if, then we have to change here or even give people back the, poly, the, the subsidy if in a way that it won't be, it, 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 we, we won't have corruption there. Hmm. But things have to change. I've given them personally one year. Let's see the policies. Let's see if things are going to work. Let's see if, in, if, if the country is now on the right path. Then we decide. Well, so far from what you have seen with the steps being taken, are you, do you think this, the, the steps are in the right direction? 70% because the attitude has not changed. The policies are good. Mm. The attitude of our government is what I'm concerned about. Like you mentioned, it, even when you want to buy these cars, there are car manufacturers in Nigeria. Right. Lagos State is partnering with someone that just did the 2000th car. Mm. Plan. So even if you want something good, then you, 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 you plan ahead and say these are our own um, what's it called? Uh, requirements. Because the roads are not bad, courtesy of the fact that for so many years we have not formulated laws to even make the roads good enough. But we need cars that are rugged that we can use on these roads. They have car manufacturers assembling uh, uh, car assembly plants all over the place. So you talk to them, then Nigerians can see that you are serious. Mm. Even if you are not, appear to be serious. So the attitude is what we need to change so that the pains me also I'm bearing, I can see that, okay, you appear to bear some of it, if not all of it. Mm. That's just, but when it comes to policies, when it comes to um, um, formulating laws and implementing them, I think we, they've started well. Because we're saving now. 
the last time it was 1.13, the first, um, um, what, what's it called, fact that they were supposed to share yeah. was supposed to be 1.1 or 1.3 billion, a trillion naira. But 900 billion was shared and the rest was taken Save. to savings. Mm. We wouldn't have been able to, dollar would have been 2,000 by now. If we had started and been, I've just um, been doing papering the cracks and artificial solutions and all that. But we, if we want to get this solution done and done effectively, what we're going through now, we, we have to go through it. But the politicians too, and the leadership have to do what they need to do to get us in the right direction. Uh, let, let me take that to Chooks now. He believes that uh, the government has you know, begun on a good note with the steps taken so far, some of the policies put in place. And, um, but then his concern is the attitude mm. of, of the politicians. Absolutely. I, I wonder how you interpret that. Uh, is that born out of the fact that we do not have a culture that holds people to account? What really is at the heart of that? There's no better way to, to, that I can express what he, he just said. This administration, with the situation we have at hand, started very well. Policies and all that. The only negative for me is that there were no funds to implement some of the policies. Right. And so they've gone into, in fact, I did a private video that I posted on my social uh, media handle where I talked about that. This administration has come up with so many viable policies, or very well articulated policies, but they don't have money. So that they are going to turn to us. In fact, in that video, myself and my wife, we did it together and you know, made it look like it's funny. But I was stating a statement of fact. Look, I don't have light since this year. I've not had light in my house. How come? They're just playing. And I live, in fact, I, I spoke to somebody uh, when I got here this morning. I spoke to one of your colleagues that I haven't seen in a long time. I said, I don't have light, so I have not been seeing your program. I don't see this program when, I, when I'm not here. Because mm. I don't have light now. Why is that? Have I you... don't know. I, we have not had light. So I spend more. I sleep in my house with 5,000 naira fuel every night. I'm not joking. And I'm so angry about it. You can see my general attitude too. Mm. I'm so upset and angry because not only am I struggling with issues and, you know, I have to provide electricity for myself in 2063 years after Nigerian independence. I'm buying fuel. And I'm telling you, go to that place, Nalausa, there in Ikeja here, and ask and confirm what I'm saying. But you know what he said? There's no better way to, to put it. Attitude is everything. Do you understand? Now, the problem we have in this country, why with all the policies and all the things, grammar and all that, it's not the, we make it look like it's uh, the present administration that has a problem. It is not. Because if you bring another one, we are going to, be, we are going to still be speaking the same grammar here. Because the, our issue is the issue of mentality. Mm. How do we address that? That's what I'm addressing. Right. Nigerians, we have the issue of Nigerian mentality. What is the Nigerian mentality? Corruption. Corruption is not stealing the money only or, mm. or, or overinflating whatever. That's not, it, 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 it's more than that. We have a mentality. Where do I start from? Is it the distraction that occurs every year when we have election? There's no year since 1999 that we have had an election and a president is sworn in that you do not have somebody sit in their bedroom or in their sitting room with their aides and all and say, we will make this government un un ungovernable. You can see what L uh, N -C N um, Labour and Co, they are doing. All these things, if you're not familiar with it, you just think that it's a, a Labour strike and all that. I've been around, so I know these things. But to answer your question, we have a mentality that makes... Us, the ordinary citizen, we are ungovernable. Hmm. We are ungovernable. Whether okay. it's at corporate level, whether it's at home, or in the street, we are ungovernable. We just put everything on leadership because, after all, they are the ones who came to campaign and all that. But they come from us. The advantage that this administration has, I have used style to lay a foundation before I started my conversation, that on this earth, many, 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 maybe centuries ago, before you become a king in your village, whether of a small village or a big town or a president or whatever, before selection is made, we looked at your riches. You must be well off. Mm. So it must be from enterprise. It must be from managerial ability. And it's okay, because this man has managed his enterprise and becomes so big, he can manage our economy. I think that's the point where 
where I give to the present uh, administration. So they have these policies that looks very nice. And they don't have money to, to fund it. My grouse is that every time we have had a creativ creativity coming to being, our politicians are never there for us. Hmm. Our politicians, they are never there for us. They are very, look at the National Assembly. He's talking about they're having a first charge, whatever, into their, whatever, and they spend the money. Without any thinking, they buy these jeeps. Do you know that on the 31st of October, I traveled to Asaba from Lagos. This is the, that's the first time I traveled in about four or five years by, by road. I, it's, a, it's a horror mm. to go to Asaba from Bini Bypass. I've seen that thing on social media. I thought it was a joke. I went there. I did videos. I came down. We spent. I left Lagos 7.30. I got to Asaba 9.30 in the night. And there are trucks carrying goods and services going to Kotek when they're going to Oka and all that. They are in that place till tomorrow. They are there. And the Buhari administration and Fasola were supposed to have fixed that road. But politics, like you said, will not allow those PDP states to enjoy guru. Meanwhile, you have PDP, you have APC, you have Labour Party members driving on that road. And those of us who are not in any of those uh, institutions or parties and who are citizens, we suffered. I suffered with my wife on that road. Am I supposed to be happy? Am I supposed to be here and be clapping for somebody? No. What I'm saying is that the attitude must change. You don't need any scientist to come and tell you how to cut down when you don't have money. When I don't have money, I cut down on my expenses. When I don't have money, I forgo certain things. This elementary economics, mm. by the way, when I was growing up, they made it look that Nigeria, in fact, I, I was very young, I used to think, oh, before I'm 30, Nigeria's problem will just disappear. Because this former president, uh, President Babangida, used to mention Idi Kakal, Idi Kakal. And you know that man's name is constantly in my mouth. Like, I don't be angry, I don't know where you are right now, but that's one name. That I thought that if you just come, it will solve our national economy. The, the name was constantly Idika Kalo. The God bless you wherever you are. They were calling the man's name. So I thought that at the time I was about 20, 21. So I'm like, ah, when this man comes, before you know it, Nigeria will have gotten so I can do all the things I want to do. The brunt Konje has come here. We are ungovernable. We are corrupt. It's, it's easier to mention leadership <laughs> because they are the ones who came to us. But you right. know that leadership can come from the bottom to the top. So, I so. try to provide it. But I think that we need to get our leaders, current leaders, to change things by being creative, by being courageous, by doing certain things and holding people account. After all, the former vice president, Pastor, uh, the last vice president, uh, told us Oshibaju. Oshibaju, that yeah. people were ferrying money out of this country. What happened to them? Right. Obasan just saved money. Somebody went to court, brought British people, they sued the Nigerian government, and he collected commission of millions of uh, dollars. Today, it's a billionaire in my town. Hmm. Well, well, we'll come back to these issues after, after the break. Just stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us uh, again. Before we went on the break, we were looking at uh, the matter raised by the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Ribadu, uh, lamenting that the current administration inherited a bankrupt country uh, from the previous administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari. And uh, they are looking to addressing the issues uh, that they left, uh, that the previous administration uh, left behind uh, because uh, the Bolatino Bullet administration is uh, repaying what was taken away from uh, the country. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, Chooks, uh, the matter of uh, the SUVs being bought and all of that, and the fact that it is important that we address uh, matters of cutting cost of governance, even though it must be stated that it is not the executive that is buying these SUVs is the National Assembly that is doing that. But what the intention of the current administration, um, as has been put across by the NSA, is to address some of the issues uh, that they had inherited or they have inherited as it is. And then you mentioned, Shooks, the matter of uh, the holding people to account as it is. And I'm bringing that question to you now, Shijibumi. With what the NSA has said, looking at uh, the coffers of government, uh, some of uh, the issues that Shooks has raised and you had raised earlier, should we begin to recall some of these 
persons who were in government in previous administration to answer questions with regards to what the situation is with uh, the, what the situation is in the country as it is. Yes, but not um, as a major approach to it because if you don't um, know where you're coming from, you won't even know how to get to where you want to get to. Okay. Um, it's part of it, but we shouldn't focus on it. Like, what this government is doing now is just trying to get enough information from the former CBN governor, mm. just to be able to get, and there are unverifiable reports that he, he, he has dropped, he has even, uh, given concession and agreed to release some funds that unverifiable, unverifiable re report. Yes. Right. But the one that's verifiable is that he, at a point in time he, there was a plea bargain. Mm. No, it was that was reported. So we can <laughs> report that. So and plea bargain always goes with something anyway. So and um, I think the government is also trying to know people that have collected dollars from government. From government. So that we can get that back from mm -hmm. there. And we, the we saw that. Yes. We saw some of that. Yes, people that have not just utilized it the way they they requested mm. those those funds. So and um, like he mentioned something that I want to also talk about. It's still leadership. How do we now make sure it's a reset? So it, it's not like just checking for past or hounding people like government at the sub-national and the national level used to do. No, it, will, it's a, it creates distraction. Do your stuff underground, get as much information. That's why people were like, this is some said he should, he should let him be granted bail. At any point in time, get him to account for what well, he has. He has been done. granted. Yes, so that's fine. Now, and because when I look at government, I tried to see what they're doing. I tried to see issues and policies. Something was said yesterday mm. that the mobile force, the police mobile force unit, should be taking off VIPs. Mm. When, and this didn't come from the police IG. Because if a police IG says something to D, with due respect to that office, there are some people in, in this country that will not adhere to it. Mm. But it came from, from the, the president. presidency. Mm. So I will now know who you want to call that is beyond the presidency. So if it fails, who do we now hold responsible? The president. Mm. So when you see issues like that, when you see that, um, the kind of security measures adopted in the Niger Delta, mm. whereby high-ranking naval and military officers allegedly are even trying to do their normal arrangements. But the civilian security forces are confronting them that you can't. Yes. And when it gets to a situation whereby you want to enforce and get out of your way with that force and guns you have. They have the direct number of the National Security Advisor. Mm. And they make sure that that person gets, gets involved. Right. So it shows seriousness. That's why I said, with due respect to, to one of our leaders in the past, I love him, I like him, and you can see that subsequent governments have been appreciative of all his efforts around the world. But in terms of leadership, it wasn't firm enough. It wasn't. So that's what I want to see in a leader. Firmness. Firmness. Mm. And the, the clarity of purpose. This is what I want. This is where I'm going. If you see the ministers, they even have a principal minister, who is not a minister, mm. that has their KPIs. Yes, coordinating. Yes. So the activities. You, I won't be surprised in the next 18 months. There are some ministers who voluntarily resign and say, I want to go to Harvard. <laughs> so I want to go to learn and, leadership. To, to le no, to learn something. Right. Because they will have been told that you've not met your KPI, so you are advised to resign before you hear that you have been sacked. Mm. So you will see those things happen. I believe that. That somebody will say they want to go to Kennedy School of Governance just to 
have some more information. And so those are the things we want to see. When you have somebody with clarity of purpose, none of us, none of us is as monopoly for creativity or can do it all. But well, you, you should be able to see some traits in your leader that this person is firm, this person has clarity of purpose, and this person is asking the right questions. So when we, when we put from within, hmm. then the followers can also know that. Because if you now request you to a commissioner of police or IG that you need, uh, as, as a musician, the way we see that, you need four mupus. And the person says it's not possible. Tell me the person you will call. Hmm. You call the IG, the IG will say it's from the presidency. So you take your number and call, you take your phone and call the presidency. So those are the things we want to see. Right. Things that were not working before, we want to see them work. Hmm. And a good example is the passport issue. Yeah, we're seeing that in two weeks. Within, it's not rocket science. Right. We know Nigerians, but we also know Nigerians. When we want to do it, we do it. Absolutely. We've been doing it all over the world. We've been doing it globally. We've been just as the... Um, the, 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 the race that has the highest um, PhDs in the U.S. So, who now, who, who, so pack at home. Are you now telling me that we won't be able to do what we need to do at home? We will, and we must, hmm. irrespective of the government. No matter the best, I told someone, no matter the person that got elected the last election, this is the final chance Nigeria has. For me, if it doesn't work now, then that means I just know that in my generation, is done. That's right. it. Right. So we ask the right questions within, we purge ourselves from within, then we get it to the followers. Everybody will be, we, we, we get themselves in check. Yeah, but with the steps that we have seen the current administration taking, it is seemingly moving in the direction that you have been wanting yes, to Yes, for see. now. Yes. <laughs> he had to go back to the matter of, for, for now. But uh, we, we must also look at uh, our economic growth rate, how we must address that too. Generating funds uh, for, for the country is also very critical, mm -hmm. which it's also a matter that um, some experts have also raised, that uh, as much as we want to look inwards, we must also look at what we can do uh, looking outside of the box to also addressing this uh, our growth rate. So where do you stand on this? I stand with myself. I stand by saying that um, I like his op 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 optimism. I, I, Aren't you optimistic? I am. Okay. But in terms of that things are going to get better, I do not agree. But I'm optimistic about Nigeria. Why not? I, I will tell you why. You know, Nigerians are leaving the shores of this country in droves. Right. I used to belong to a WhatsApp group, my university classmate and all that, and early this year I left that group because of the same problem of mentality. People will be posting things about Nigeria, and when you do that, it makes me angry. Okay. And people who are slaves in America and elsewhere, they will be joining to talk about Nigeria and ignoring the great things that we have here going for us. Look, my personal economy, eh, nobody in Harvard tells me how to run it. Do you understand? Can you look, take a look at me? I can see you. You can see me. Mm. His personal economy, he does not need any advisor. When it's tight, I get creative in my small business. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. Like, we all agree, it's not a science subject. You have need. You wake up, you don't have money in your pocket, you don't have it in your back account. Nobody will tell you to find something to do. Except you want to start acting like some of, of our people, you start begging and all that. Government and leadership disability is the problem that we have. Now, let me paint a picture for you. This is my, this is my phone, right? Let us ag assume that this phone is, my, is democracy, which we are practicing. But underneath, you have four legs. Under this democracy, you have four legs. I'm not using this uh, table as an example because it has more than uh, four legs. But imagine that this phone has four legs. Mm. Now, one of the legs is politics. The other one is judiciary. The other one is INEC. And one other one I can't really remember. Right? The problem we are faced with now is politics. On that road beneath bypass and other roads that I have not traveled on, trailers and trucks carrying goods and, some, and products are stuck there. Okay. People are stuck in traffic for days. Wait. You know the, the economic value chain of transportation? Mm. So what, what are you talking about? Looking for other sources to whatever. 
Don't they pay taxes? Right. Don't I? Is money not circulating within whatever on the road? We stopped to eat. The trans the transporter bought fuel. We bought bread. Look, I'm I'm not an economist. I'm not an accountant. I'm just a reader. That's what I do for a living. I do not need anybody to tell me the value chain of transportation. Absolutely. Yet the federal government of Nigeria, Buhari's administ President Buhari's administration, they left that road unattended to because it, maybe because it, those politics, it, those states, PDP state. You said maybe. Maybe. But on what ground will you leave that place unattended to? Right. A highway like that, that highway should actually be six um, lanes on this lanes. side and six. Meanwhile, it's two, and the two, the four lanes are blocked. Okay, what other reason do you want me to deduce that gave rise to that road being like that? And you have a governor in Delta State, and you have a governor in Edo State. Mm. These guys, they, they are our leaders. But you know what, they, they, what is wrong with them? Leadership disability. Mm. So you don't need anybody to come and tell you how to do your side, economy to better and all that. Why don't you fix the road? So that those goods going to, I, I will send you those videos. They're on my phone here. Going to Ecotec, Bennett, going to going to Oka. Trucks, they are on the road as I'm speaking to you now. I believe that this current administration would look into that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, before they do anything about it, let them sit down and value what pain they have been inflicted on the economy by not fixing that, that road. Mm. Because people are stuck on the road. People are traveling for different reasons. They are spending money. They are not getting value for money. They are on the road. Goods are stuck. Goods and products are stuck in traffic. And you, you want us to discuss economy. What, ad, what advice, what economic advice? You want World Bank to come and tell you to come and fix the road? Mm. You want them to tell you to go to Kogi and Abuja and to fix it? Is it a science subject? It is not. Well, the minister has now, said that the, he was going the, to... The point he has I've moved made, around the country to the, look at the roads that need the, attention. The, the, the point I he's made, going to address that. Yeah, the point I've made is that you work here. Nobody tells you how to manage your finances. Absolutely. Exactly. If you need extra, you know how women do, they carry mm -hmm. a straw bag, either selling shoes or clothes as a side yeah. hustle mm -hmm. and all that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let them also sit down and do the same thing. Find how to make money and stop suffocating us. You're asking me to pay tax. This guy had me on the road asking me to bring something uh, on whatever. I said, why? He said, because government has written a circle that they should raise revenue. Your final word on this, quickly. Yes. Um... With everything being said, I will say, I will conclude that um, the reason for, for the 70-80% I've given in terms of policies is just because I can see a bit of um, sanity and uh, purposefulness in everything that uh, 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 has been done. Like the, the issue of road is mentioning okay. now, yeah. um, if anybody can do it, I think it's the present Administration. No, President Minister. Minister. Yes, because it he had moved around. What incidents. And yeah. when you look at the nation, the very important health, um, transportation, transportation works, and education. Yeah. And if you look at those key economy, those key um, appointments, they're very germane. Some have been used to settle political right. appointees, but sorry, <laughs> political um, <laughs> colleagues. We understand. Uh, but, you know, for those ones, they've been, they've been run pegs. Around, around homes. Okay, we'll leave it here now. Uh, gentlemen, we must thank you, policy analyst Shijibumi Adebi Bennett, as well as public affairs analyst Chuk Sumuko, for your time on the program. Thank you. Thank